Congress of the United States of America, its job is to write the federal laws. There are two houses of Congress, the Senate and the House of Representatives. If they can agree on the wording of the laws, it goes to the president for him to sign into law or to veto. The job of the Congress is to look at the Constitution, follow the Constitution, and write the laws of the land. After we won our independence from England, the colonies set about forming a central government. We never had a central government here. Rather, we had 13 governments, one for each of the colonies. The Continental Congress that had met at Princeton, New Jersey, and hired George Washington and gave him money to spend on an army, did not have real authority, and it was quickly disbanded when the British went back to England. The first government we had here was defined in the Articles of Confederation. This set up a small Congress and a one-year term rotating presidency, but there was no real central government. The real power still remained in the state governments. The states imposed crippling tariffs on goods from out of state, and a movement soon began for a new central government. After the states sent delegates to Philadelphia to draft a constitution, and after all 13 states adopted it in constitutional conventions held in each state, the new government began to operate, first in New York City, then in Philadelphia, then permanently in Washington, D.C. The framers took great pains to create a unique and limited federal government, unique in that its powers were precisely defined and separated among three branches, and federal in that it would not interfere with the states except to stop those tariffs. The Congress was created with two bodies of representatives. The House of Representatives was elected directly by the voters, and it was intended to be their voice in the federal government. Each state has an assigned number of representatives proportioned to the state's population. The Senate was elected by the legislatures of each of the 13 states, and it was to be the state's voices in the federal government. Each state had, and still has, two senators, though the senators today are popularly elected. Even though the Constitution begins with the words, we the people, in reality, it was we, the states, that created the federal government. Not wanting to give up too much of their power, the framers were careful to set forth the powers that the new government would have. These powers were all given to the Congress, since it is the Congress's job to write the laws. The president's job is to enforce the laws, and the courts were established to interpret them. But the real power in the federal government the power to regulate human behavior, the power to write the laws, was given by the Constitution to the Congress. The Constitution gives Congress only 17 specific powers, areas in which it can write laws, like keep interstate commerce regular, establish post offices, raise an army and a navy, support the arts, establish a court system, mint and coin money, establish uniform standards for weights and measures, and collect excise taxes. The Congress was also told to stay out of the way of the states. Income taxes were forbidden. Congress was part-time and had no offices or staff. The Ninth and Tenth Amendments to the Constitution, which were soon added as a part of the Bill of Rights, made clear that Congress was only given the powers enumerated in the Constitution, and all remaining powers stayed with the states and the people but it would not stay that way for long. The same folks who wrote in the First Amendment that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech quickly made it a crime for anyone to criticize the president and members of Congress. Soon Congress established a central bank, a precursor to the Federal Reserve System, even though there was no authority in the Constitution to do that either. Generations later, Congress would legalize slavery, tax homemade whiskey, regulate the amount of wheat a farmer could grow in his own backyard for his family's own use, regulate the ages of persons who could work in factories, the prices merchants could charge for goods, the strength of water pressure in home showers, the amount of lobsters one can fish from the sea. And Congress would even outlaw the movement of certain goods it didn't care for in interstate commerce, even though its whole purpose was to assure that interstate commerce was kept regular. The philosopher Lord Acton once wrote that power corrupts 
and absolute power corrupts absolutely. He was right. Congress does not draw to its halls those who love liberty. It draws those who love power. We suffer from that today. After over 200 years of stretching the plain meaning of the words in the Constitution, we now have a Congress that thinks it can write any law, regulate any human activity, and tax any event, no matter what the Constitution says. But the Constitution was not written in order to enable Congress to right every wrong. It was written to define the federal government, to limit its behavior to the 17 specific delegated powers contained in the document, and to leave the remaining power in government to the states. Today, the states have lost virtually all their independence to the Congress, which has simply and regularly commanded them to do the things it wants done or offers them money, like a bribe, to bend them to its will. Will we ever have a Congress that respects the states, protects our liberties, and stays within the confines of the Constitution? Congress writes the laws of the land, and as long as it stays within the 17 powers given to it by the Constitution, our freedoms will be preserved. But it's the job of the President and the Supreme Court to make sure that the laws that Congress writes comply with the Constitution.